I am not ending this video until I get the drone down. That is a guarantee. This has been an amazing place to camp. I've really enjoyed being here. It has been so good for just my mental well-being to be somewhere so quiet, so peaceful, and so beautiful. And just to have this, this view right out my door. There's my van. And we're about to go though. I was only intending to spend two nights here. But then yesterday I woke up uh, to Frank had thrown up in the van. And then he, after going outside and stuff, uh, came in, he drank a bunch of water, he threw up again. So thankfully both of those were just on one blanket, but I have to find laundry. So one of the downsides of being in a van is that when like emergency gross things happen, you kind of need to go to a laundromat rather quickly or that uh, blanket's just gonna get nasty. So that is high on our to-do list today. But I didn't want to drive yesterday, even though I had a bunch of plans for myself uh, because Frank wasn't feeling good and I wanted to just stay home with him and comfort him and make cozy environment and not subject him to driving. But he is feeling much better today. I think we just went a little overboard on the treats, so it's probably my fault. There's a bakery. <laughs> that opens today. Uh, it wasn't open yesterday or the day before. So uh, it has a 4.9 out of five star rating. And so I really, really want to check it out and get myself a tasty treat. I got a cinnamon bun, which isn't what I would normally get. And I was actually planning to get like a treat and a coffee to go and then go down and enjoy it at the ocean. Uh, there's a trail. I'm actually just parked right next to the trailhead, uh, but they didn't have an espresso bar. So I parked here and I made myself coffee and then I decided I might as well just have my coffee and cinnamon bun hanging out with Frank before I go for a walk just to, you know, spend more time together and... Yeah, not feel like my not not feel like I'm rushing myself today. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's what we're doing. I have a lot of chores I've realized I need to do. I need to get rid of recycling, garbage. I need to do that laundry. I need to fill up with water, which I've never done around here. Um, I probably need gas, and I'm not gonna fill up the diesel. I'm in the process of running the diesel dry because I have to do some repairs. I've done some repairs recently. I have more repairs to do. And um, I basically just have to replace all of the fuel line because it is now leaking between the pump and the intake to the heater, which is bad. It's very, very, very slow leak, uh, but I'm gonna get on that ASAP. So I'm just running, running this tank dry. And that'll make this whole process easier of replacing every segment of fuel line. It will mean unmounting the heater, which I'm not stoked on. But anyways, right now, right now I'm not going to worry about that. Right now I'm not going to worry about any of my chores. I'm just going to drink this coffee. I'm going to eat this hopefully delicious cinnamon bun. I got it without the icing. Hi. I don't know if you can eat this, Frank. There's probably raisins in it. It looks good. It looks well cinnamon they don't have much oh okay mm. Mm. Okay. that's a really good cinnamon bun yeah and they had very reasonable prices like they were almost like pre-inflation bakery prices which was nice
but feels great to be out here. It is so nice. I love the Arbutus trees. I love this type of coastline. I would absolutely love to call home along a coastline where Arbutus trees grow someday. Although I doubt it will ever be in my budget because they're all kind of full of people or I would need a boat or to build like buy my own small island or something. So yes, for now I will just come saunter and enjoy them. It took me maybe two hours to get out here. It really wasn't very far. <laughs> It'll definitely be quick going back because the way out was taking photos and videos with three different lenses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just so nice. It's really nice that it's not raining today. I'm glad to have at least one day on the Sunshine Coast here where it's not raining. And um, yeah, it's like two hours left of daylight. So I think I'm gonna hustle back to the van and then see about going somewhere else um, for sunset in case there's a nice sunset. And ideally somewhere that Frank could join me. I think he would like to just spend some time sitting outside he is starting to feel a lot more energetic. I know he wants to walk around. Now I have to keep him off his foot, uh, which is great. It's great that he wants to do more than he's allowed to do right now. But I think he would appreciate just sitting outside for a little bit. Frank, I've brought you to the beach. Look at how close we are. Yeah, bud, you wanna go outside? We can just sit by the beach if you want. Chew on some sticks. I've been to this beach once before, years ago. I think I was in the minivan and I remember just thinking like, nope, <laughs> not for me. It's small. There's a lot of houses on either side. Just the little middle part is a provincial park and there's really not much for trails. But today it is the perfect spot because I can park right there. There's my van. And uh, Frank walked across the street and I just carried him over the log and put him down here where uh, he just has sticks. I've been offering him sticks. I found one he was interested in, but he's more into just chilling, just enjoying being outside, sniffing the air, barking at people who come by. And yeah, I think it's good for him. Hi, where are you going? You can't go anywhere. It's just not good walking, Frank. Is that a better spot, bud? You're laying on my backpack. It's a nice thing about having a big backpack is he can lay on it unrolled. And we've got a little bit of fur coming back here. Just slowly, that's enough that he's not as spiky. You can see his spots again. Yeah. I think it's time to go back to the van now. Yeah. I'm going to get on with our chores. It's going to be dark soon. So for more than 10 years now, I've been doing laundry at Laundry Mats as my primary 
source of laundry. And this is one of the only laundromats I've ever gone to that does not have a change machine, which is just mind blowing because you need loonies and quarters to do laundry. And normally a laundry mat would just take the coins out of the machines, put it back into the change machine and the same coins cycle around, but then they get cash from the change machine. Anyways, thankfully, the chiropractor's office down the street, um, the woman who worked there was able to give me loonies for the washer and then the cleaning guy came in and he was able to give me quarters for the dryer when I get to that, so. It's pretty rare to find a outside tap on this time of year in Canada, but that's awesome. <laughs> Generally, I try to avoid going out to camp after dark if I'm somewhere that I haven't stayed before, like where I am right now. But it does help that I have um, very bright headlights now. That makes a huge difference. Yeah, we did a lot of chores in town. I didn't manage to get my recycling done. I just keep it all in this like big net bag and then... When I get to like recycling places, it's easy just to like walk around, drop off all the different things. But then also I put it in the front uh, when we're in camp and then I just put it on the floor back here when we're driving. So it's just easy to keep it out of the way. So I still got to do that, but you know, I got laundry done, um, water done, and I went to the grocery store and I bought some fruit. I've been going to the grocery store often just to look for whatever fruit is on sale. Because I'm in a real fruit kick lately and I have what's called oral allergy syndrome so sometimes I react pretty badly to things like apples and stone fruits and stuff and I really don't like peeling oranges so I eat bananas and then whenever they're on sale I will gorge on berries so strawberries were four dollars a pound so got some strawberries um oh yeah they're right here <laughs> they're right here I've been eating them uh, I will eat a pound a night when they're on sale. I don't have to spill that. It's tea. Frank and I are just going to hang out in here, chill tonight, and I'm actually going to open up my computer and work. Uh, probably with one hand, so the other hand can pet Frank until he falls asleep. And, um... I have to see what we get up to tomorrow. Tomorrow's our last full day here on the Sunshine Coast, and then... The next day, we gotta catch a ferry in the afternoon to get Frank back in time for his bandage change. So it has gone by very quickly. Alright, good day. Uh, it is 2 in the afternoon. I've just finished working for the morning. But I slept horribly and I had really, really weird dreams. And then I woke up to an email from DJI that they don't think it was a flyaway and that I have to buy a new drone. But they'll give me a 15% discount. Unless I can get the drone back. In which case, I could get it replaced for cheap as a... As a damage so um i guess i'm going back to where i was camping to throw rocks at the drone to try to get it down and my van is a complete disaster so i have to clean up first i with a hundred percent confidence am certain that it was not my error that i did not crash the drone i was just hovering and then it just veered without me doing anything you might have started to notice a little bit of a theme cropping up in a lot of my videos recently. A little thread woven throughout. And that is me being very intentional about taking care of my mental health and being mindful to be gentle on my nervous system. It's been a big year so far and I came into it pretty worn down and not in the best mental state. 
Thankfully, I do have a lot of different tools available at my disposal that I'm trying to integrate to just really take care of myself. And one of those tools, which is therapy, is a lot easier thanks to today's sponsor, which is BetterHelp. BetterHelp has allowed therapy to fit into my lifestyle and is much less intimidating than when I used to attend in-person therapy. With BetterHelp, you can talk to your therapist from your home, all cozy, or even out in nature, and you get to choose whether the session is a phone call, video chat, or even messaging. Whatever is the most comfortable version for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than may be available in your city. To get started, go to betterhelp.com alpine to save 10% off your first month. Then you'll fill out a questionnaire that will ask you questions about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like. And then BetterHelp can match you with a therapist to help in most cases within 48 hours. After that, you can schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you. If you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists with a click of a button in your settings at no additional cost. This is a favorite feature for many people because they don't need to break up with their therapist, which can feel a little awkward, and you don't have to start the search for a new one all over again. Join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life, myself included. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com alpine. That's better H-E-L-P. Clicking that link helps support this channel and it also gets you 10% off your first month of better help. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you as well. I am ready to roll out. Uh, it is now three o'clock. I have two hours of daylight left and it's gonna be at least 45 minutes to drive there. It's pouring rain. So yeah, <laughs> whatever it is what it is. I love having a drone. The drone has been rained on for days at this point. It's not going to be useful, but if I can get it back in my possession, then I might be able to get a cheap replacement under my plan. Anyways, let's go. It just, it kind of sucks leaving somewhere I've camped without really enjoying it, but also leaving somewhere I've camped that has an outhouse without pooping. I really like to take advantage of like easy pooping situations and today that did not happen. So luckily there's an outhouse where I'm going. So if the need arises, I'm covered. Um, something you don't think about in a house, you just go poop when you have to poop. But when you live in a van, you're like, oh, here's a good opportunity to poop. Wish I could take advantage of it because I know I'm gonna have to poop at some point. Anyways, you're rattling because I'm on a back road, so I will see you when we get to the drone site. Alright, I am here. I do not have a lot of daylight hours, but it's not raining as bad as it was further south, so that's good. I have parts so my deck is as directly under the drone as I could. And for my first attempt, I have this collection of trekking poles, five of them, and duct tape. I'm just going to tape them all together and see if it'll reach to knock it down because that feels like the least frustrating way and if that doesn't work I'll move my van out of the way and just huck rocks but now that I'm here it seems a little higher than I was recalling on the drive so not even close <laughs> That might have worked if the stick didn't break. I thought it was a good stick. And I found a whole tree down that might reach, but it's way too heavy for me. Oh, man. Oh. 
I feel so defeated. I can't even come close to tossing stones that far. Like, at all. It's so frustrating. It seems to have shifted. It's hanging differently in the tree. It looks more precarious. I feel like if that stick hadn't broke, I could have got it. It's just, it's really hard with that big wobbly pole. I have nothing else I could build that long. I don't have my fishing rod on me or I could like try casting stones up there. <sighs> I thought too, if I had my pellet gun, I could try shooting at the branch. And yeah, I would consider going back up on my roof and just wiggling random branches with my pole pole. But my knee just like got super angry the last time I came down from the van and it's like in searing hot spicy pain. So I can't really safely climb up on my roof right now. So I don't know, I'm just gonna sit here and calm down because I'm trying not to cry. I just, it's like one of my biggest weaknesses is losing things. I just do not handle it well. I do not handle losing things well. It's, and I was like, it was a flyaway. I was so certain that it would just be like a smooth replacement process. That's why I didn't upset myself. Like doing all of this that I'm doing now the other day. And yeah. <laughs> January has been a hard month. It has been just, honestly, I hope the rest of the year goes smoother. I think there's a lot of people feeling this right now. I'm seeing a lot of posts about how long January has been. I have stayed here where the drone is in the tree. I did not want to, that was not, not what I wanted to do last night. I really wanted to stay at the beach. I'd been planning to stay in a particular spot for many days, but Life just doesn't go as planned. Most of the time. Most of the time I've had plans. Many different plans. Lots of different options planned. Ideas in mind. And then something different unfolds. And you just go with it. And that's just kind of life. That's my life at least. Some people might live more predictable routine lives. But I don't. <laughs> I don't. And so... Uh, I failed to get the drone out of the tree last night, but it is dangling in a different, more precarious position, which is why I stayed here, because there was wind in the forecast, although it never got windy here, and I hoped the rain might get really intense, because it was raining kind of hard last night. I hoped it might get intense and knock it down, and it did not, and I got up this morning, and it is not on the ground, and it is not any lower, so I will have to dismantle my poles, because I do have to get Frank and I to the ferry earlier this afternoon so we can get back to Squamish to get his bandage changed. But it was just a bit of a trip staying here last night because I ended up with a bunch of mosquito bites. I ended up with a few mosquitoes in the van. Last night was January 31st and I was getting mosquito bites and I just thought I am not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. I really thought I had emotionally healed from the horror of the Arctic mosquitoes, <laughs> not fully, uh, but I was drinking some tea last night. This is this is my morning coffee. I'm drinking two thirds caffeinated. Um, I was drinking tea last night, yogi tea. So there's like a little fortune on like the dangler, and it said, "What belongs to you shall come to you." And I was so optimistic I would wake up to this drone on the ground, but nope. So we're gonna go. Here, I'm gonna get Frank outside for morning pee and then we gotta go. Um, and then we might just have to come back here after Frank's vet appointment. I have a couple things to do in Squamish and then we might just turn around and come back here. Uh, it just feels wrong to just abandon the drone when it's, it's kind of just like $700 dangling in the tree right there that I just can't let go of that easily. Because if I can get it down, then I can probably get it replaced for $100 <laughs> versus buying a new one. So I have to kind of try. I might try to get some bunch of bamboo poles that I could strap together. And yeah, the other options I had were to park my van close to the tree, tie a rope to the tree, 
and then try to like tug the tree. But that just seemed ridiculous. And then the other option that some people might resort to is cutting down the tree, which I absolutely will not do. I will not cut down a living tree to get a drone. Um, but it's not also, it's not just the money. It's that it's like a bunch of plastic and battery. And that feels wrong to be littering. And I know eventually it would fall down and probably eventually somebody else would take it off and throw it away. But it's my responsibility. And since I do have the ability and freedom granted by my lifestyle to come back, then I'm probably going to do that. So anyways, um, I got to get this day going and um, hit the road. So I don't know. I don't know what this video is. There's just a lot happening. A lot and nothing at the same time. So we have made it to the ferry. We're definitely going to be on the sailing we need to be on. Yeah, come on up, bud. And I've showered, which feels great. Three dollars $3 for a no limit shower is something I can't pass up. It had been a week, so I was due to shower. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm going to be coming back here in a couple days. Oh, it has been a day. It has been a very long day. Frank's bandage change went amazing. That is what we came back to Squamish for. It went really well. He slept through it. His foot looks great. It's healing amazing. So good to see. He's actually just woken up properly and I fed him and now he's ripping into his squirrel again. Uh, but then I went to the post office and I got mail. I love going to the post office. It is one of my favorite things to do. I do not like dealing with my email. I hate checking my email. I hate dealing with my email. It just for some reason feels so tiresome. But paper mail is super exciting. So I got this mail today. It has this cute sticker. And it's addressed to Amanda Est Dearest. And there's no return address. And I just like could not figure out who would have sent me mail. Because I haven't given out my P.O. Box address to many people. And it's not yet on the sticker envelopes. It says, you are one fine apple. And it is a friendship card from Flossie. It is so cute. And they sent me one of their holographic stickers go with the flow it's exactly the reminder I needed it's so extra cute though because I was just with Flossie like 10 days ago <laughs> but I really really appreciate this so cute and they have those stickers on their web store um, <laughs> and it really made it easier to deal with the email I got a couple hours later which was DJI telling me that they think that it was user error that they don't care what i have to say or what i experienced or that i watched in horror on the screen as the drone just veered sideways into a tree like incredibly fast they conveniently have no proof of that in the flight log so i have a big day here tomorrow and then i'll be catching the 1055 ferry the last sailing back over to the sunshine coast 40 minute sailing and then an hour and a half drive back out to where i was camped Try to get the drone down. So tomorrow I'm going to be rounding up some supplies the best I can. I'm going to go to Home Depot anyways. All right, so it's been a pretty big day so far. It's not even 2 p.m. I'm definitely going to have to have a nap to survive it because I have about 12 hours left to go. But I started my day with a donut because that's really nice. I got one for Frank and he's about to have it before we lay down together. But then I went for a walk with my friend and her children and her dog Lola, who's Frank's best doggy friend. And I think you've met Lola before on this channel if you've been her around around here for a while. My brain is losing it. But my friend lent me 80 feet worth of bamboo poles, which is what I was gonna buy to try to get the drone down, but it's not available this time of year. So that worked out really, really well. And then I went and bought these massive rolls of duct tape and I am not ending this video until I get the drone down. That is a guarantee. So no matter how many random things have to happen between whenever this video started and when I get the drone down is what this video is going to be. 
everything and nothing. And I went to my storage locker to drop off a couple things and I got new fuel line. It looks way bigger, but the interior diameter is the same. So this is actually made for diesel. This is the stuff that came with the heater, which is not a brand name heater. It is a Chinese knockoff which is why it's called the Chinese diesel heater. And diesel eats this fuel line and it just gets brittle and starts leaking diesel. And I've already replaced segments multiple times. And now there's like a pretty critical segment that's just starting to have a tiny leak. I might've already mentioned this, but I'm gonna replace it all with proper thick, meant for diesel fuel line. So that feels great. I don't know what else I've done, but I need to have a nap. It's gonna be like, probably 2 a.m. by the time I get to the camp. And no, I do not have to rush this. I make my own schedule. I could go back tomorrow. I could relax about it. But I am choosing not to because I want to increase my chances of getting back to that site before somebody else is camping there. And I just want to get it over with. I just want this drone out of the tree because the sooner the drone is down, the sooner I can mail it in and hopefully get a drone back as a replacement uh, which would be amazing because I have a trip planned for the second half of February and I really, really, really want to fly a drone. And if I get some nice weather, I think you will really appreciate that I put in this effort to have a drone for that trip. With that said, it's donut time for Frank. All right, I am on the ferry. It is 11 p.m. It was a whirlwind 33 hours in Squamish. That might be my shortest trip home ever. Um, yeah, so I got a lot done. I just spent my past few hours there hanging out with friends. We had um, takeout ramen together and then played a board game. It was really fun. It was really great. Uh, I got to spend time with two different friends today. Frank just enjoyed a broccoli stock, which he had been turning down. So it's great that his tummy's feeling better. It gave him heck for a couple days, but he seems to be feeling a lot better now. And um, yeah, that's awesome. So with that said, I'm going to spend the rest of the ferry ride just tidying in here because it's a bit of a mess. Um, anytime life becomes a whirlwind, my van just gets messy. So. I'm gonna work on that and then unless anything eventful happens, I will pick you up tomorrow. <sighs> All right, it is time to do this. I have a plan of how I'm gonna attach everything. I'm attaching them end to end, which isn't the most stable for a singular pole, but I'm gonna build a double and they're gonna be offset. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is, this is kind of being really fun <laughs> in a weird sort of way. I've never done anything like this in my life. Oh boy. <sighs> and the, the unfortunate part is like, there's really no lesson to learn. Like I didn't mess up flying. I can't like be more Everything careful. It just process happened. Was challenging. I think just this is going to work. Pole up into the tree, oh I goodness. had to weave back and forth between oh different goodness. branches working with the so silly. of the this pole. This is so I silly. I to stop to do also, repairs on several different occasions. Possibly this one I was adding kind a of stick genius. at the bottom to make it longer. So here is my bending and massive so much. I went bamboo pole. <laughs> several different I don't know angles. if it will build to go and straight up. I think it's gonna be yeah, really bendy. Well, like I think I if I can said, just it was hard. feed it up and lean it on the branches, I can get it far enough to like wiggle some branches. So here goes. There it is, I see it, I see it. Everything about this process was incredibly challenging. I had to weave the pole up carefully between different branches so that it would support the bendiness of the pole. Here I was adding another stick at the bottom to try to make it longer since it would kind of bend over on itself quite a bit. And I had to go at it from several different angles and learn how to work with 
the waveform of the bamboo and when to move it up in relation to its back and forth waviness. I just realized this probably doesn't look good, but it's way easier to control. Oh. It is like trying to push a rock with a rope. It's just really hard to control the tip when it's that long. So I'm going to move my van and um, yeah, get up there and hopefully that gives me a bit more control or at least like the floppy end will be further up. professional bamboo pole whipper now <laughs> it is definitely broken but I'm sending this in oh my goodness <sighs> that was a test of persistence oh I'm tired that was really hard work <laughs> That is so satisfying. Okay, thanks for watching. I got a cute clip of Frank to send you off. I'll see you next time. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to check out the link in my description to get started and save 10% off your first month.